Okay, so you can see I've got CPM running on my Z80 Playground here. And one of the nice things about CPM, the operating system, is that it's easy to replace parts of it with newer parts. Uh, and the most obvious part to replace is the CCP, which is basically the user interface of CPM. It's where you type the commands. So that's, we are in the CCP right now. This is the CCP. Well, it won't understand that. Um, and so I found online the source for for a replacement CCP for CPM 2.2, which is called Z80 CCP. And so in theory, at least, it should be slightly faster because it's supposed to be written in Z80 assembly language uh, rather than 8080 and also give a little more functionality. And I downloaded it into an ARC file, which I've got here. So I downloaded it onto my PC and I copied it onto the I copied it onto the uh, the USB drive of the Z80 Playground, put it in drive C, and there it is, z80ccp.arc. So in order to extract an ARC file, you need to use unarc. So you need to put unarc z80ccp.arc uh, c colon. If you don't put the c colon at the end or the drive letter where you want to extract it to, it doesn't extract the files from the archive. It just shows them on the screen which isn't massively helpful so there you go i think it's quite good that on arc program it shows you all the details about readme and z80ccp.asm that it's pulling out of this archive file it's kind of like a zip file i suppose the cpm equivalent of a zip file now it takes a while to extract things from the archive file but when it finally does i'll copy that oh there we go i'll copy that um file back onto my pc and let's take a look at it then so here we are back on my PC looking at the files that we've got and there's z80ccp.asm. Oh yeah, and there's that readme file. Hold on, let's just check what's in that. Let's put that back in there and have a little look. Uh, yeah, let's do type readme. I always like looking in these readme files. Oh, so Tom P. Douglas. I think the date was was 1988. So for some reason, Tom P. Douglas, he's put, he's put his address and everything. He'd create that archive file. Let's get a hold of him. Anyway, so what I've got so far is the source code, which is z80ccp.asm. But unfortunately, it's in 8080 opcodes or 8080 mnemonics, which I'm no expert on and I don't really completely understand them. I use Z80 style mnemonics um, and the PASMO assembler. So I'm going to have to convert this from 8080 to Z80. And I can do that by using a program under CPM called ZTRAN. So let's go back to the Z80 Playground and do that. Right, so we're back on the Z80 Playground and we've got this Z80ccp.asm file. We need to use ZTRAN, ZTRAN4 in fact, Z80ccp.asm. And this program handily converts 8080 to Z80 code. Elium Associates 1986, eh? Mmm. Well, there's not a whole lot to see while it's doing that, but when it eventually finishes, we should get a Z80CCP.Z80 file, I think. Uh, Z80CCP.Z80. Right, let's take that back to the PC, uh, open it up in VS Code, and see if we can assemble it. Okay, so back on my PC with this file now. Um, VS Code didn't like the .Z80 extension, so I've had to rename it to Z80CCP.ASM. But as you can see, very nice Z80 style mnemonics that I think Pasmo will understand, even though it's left the comments still starting with a star, which looks a bit, little bit weird. Um, and I found a couple of places in the source code where I'll need to edit it slightly, obviously the org and something about doing the clear the screen CLS command. So I'll see that, whether I can edit those and then get it assembled. Yeah, and that has given me a z80ccp.bin, which is just a fraction under 2k in size, which is actually smaller than the other CCP I was using. But I set the org location for it to exactly the same place as my other CCP, so I can just slot them in seamlessly and try out this CCP in, in place of the other one. Um, I did have to make a couple of tweaks for Pasmo's syntax. It didn't like a couple of the quirky bits of syntax, and I've changed those that CLS command to just write out the VT52 code to clear the screen. So um, that should get it going. And I've copied the z80ccp.bin file into the CPM folder on the USB drive that I'm gonna put back into the Z80 Playground. There's just one other thing I've gotta do. So you can see there's a ccp.bin and a z80ccp.bin, and I need to edit the z80.cfg, the config file, 
to tell the Z80 Playground to use this new CCP file. So let's edit that in Notepad. Yeah, the all important part is to edit this one line that says CCPN, which stands for CCP name. We just change that to Z80 CCP.bin instead of CCP.bin. Okay, so let's put the uh, files back into the Z80 Playground. So that's the new CCP bin and the new config file. Press reset and see what happens. Yep. Uh, ooh, there we are. So we're in the new CCP, which shows a different kind of prompt because that shows the drive letter and then the user number. Um, so we must be in the new CCP. Let's try a CLS. Oh, nice. The IR, they said they're taking the first. Yeah, they've taken the, removed the drive letter there. I'm not sure what you gain from that. Anyway, the problem with this drive letter and then user number is that my version of CPM currently isn't showing the, isn't working with users because uh, that's a little bit broken. So I'll have to fix that next. But we do seem to be in the new um, CCP. Yeah, one big advantage of this one is that it's supposed to find the file. Um, if you type, say we try and run Sargon, which is on drive A, and we're on drive C, it will look on drive C first, and if it doesn't find it, it will look on drive A. So if we type Sargon now, uh, which I suppose you use for utilities, really, rather than programs, um, but instead of saying file not found, it is actually loading it. So um, the advantage of that, yeah, there you go. So the advantage of that, is that um, you put all your utilities like your unarc and things like that on drive A and use them from other drives without having to keep changing around. Anyway, it's quite easy to get hold of another CCP as long as you can get the source code, assemble it into the right location, stick it on the Z80 playground and change the configuration to use it.